How to play Kings of Israel. Start by setting up the board. Next, shuffle the ability cards and give one to each player. These are your profit cards. Put the profit pawns of your choice into the starting locations on the cards and place the king purple token on the first king. The starting player card goes to the oldest player. Set the blessings and the sin and punishment cards to the side. Give each player two resource cards. Shuffle the locations and draw cards until you have two plus the number of players, discarding any nations of or shall be again cards. Place one sin cube on each of those locations. Next draw one plus the number of players numbers worth of cards and place two sin cubes on each of those locations. Finally draw cards equal to the number of players and place gold cow idols on each of those locations. Shuffle all the cards drawn back into the deck and set that to the side. Place an altar on Samaria and now you're ready to play the game. The starting player draws a blessing card because we're in a good king phase. In an evil king phase they would draw a sin and punishment card. It can be played any time in the game and doesn't count towards your six card hand limit. On the first turn, skip the sin phase and go straight to the profit phase. Players can take up to four actions with any combination of all seven possible actions to use. The actions include moving a pawn across a road or a boat, preaching to the Israelites, which means remove one sin cube from your current location, destroy an idol, which uses two actions to remove one idol from your location, acquire resources, which means draw one resource card from the resource deck, build an altar, if you discard a gold, stone, and wood resource from your hand, you can build an altar at your location. You can make a sacrifice by discarding a cattle and grain resource card at a location with an altar. And that will remove all sin cubes from that altar's location and one sin cube from each neighboring location if connected by a road. And if you're at the same location as another player, you may give them a resource card. After each player had their four actions, pass the starting player card to the next player move the king token down to the next sin line. Now the first turn's over, we'll go to the second turn and do all four phases. So starting with the king's godliness phase, we'll draw either a blessing or a sin and punishment, and we'll actually do the sin increase phase on this turn. To do the sin increase phase, flip over the locations plus one of the number of players and put a sin cube on each one. If a nation of is flipped, put cubes on each city connected to the nation that is invading. If a nation gets a third or more than three cubes, then place a golden calf idol on that location. If a sin cube would be placed in a location that has a golden calf idol, then sin goes there as well as all neighboring cities. Now let's look if you go into an evil king phase. Instead of a blessing, you get a sin and punishment card. If you have a foretold event, you read it and then put it face up underneath as many cards as there are players and draw a replacement one. Then you take that action instead. Knowing that the next foretold event once face up comes, you must play that foretold event. To win the game, you must build altars. Seven in a two player game, eight in a three player game, and nine in a four player game. So you have to balance this against ways to lose the game. If you run out of sin cubes, the game is over. If you get to the end of all the kings and Israel is destroyed, the game is over then too. So you must use your actions wisely to turn Israel back to God. That's how you play Kings of Israel.